Yo, yo, you know what time it is. You know what time it is. It's your boy Trevor David Jones, back with another review. Season one, episode six of Ahsoka, Far, Far Away. A very apt title for this episode. So without further ado, let's jump right in with the positives. Okay, so it starts off with the Purgles flying through hyperspace. And what have I told y'all? Scale and beauty. When you're dealing with Jon Favreau, you're gonna see scale and beauty, and we saw it again here. The Purgles, obviously gargantuan, floating through hyperspace. The colors, the lights, absolutely beautiful. It was a perfect way to start the episode. It really got you into the mood of what was about to happen. It just looked dope, so I gotta give a shout out to that. So, jumping forward, we're gonna cut forward into the episode with the reveal, or rather the release, of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Super crazy moment. Um, it was funny, it was funny and it was also scary. So the Star Destroyer comes out of nowhere and like, it, you know, it's dropping Thrawn off. And although it was epic, my first question was, this man has been in exile in another galaxy. So they've just had the Star Destroyer ga gassed up this whole time? Like, they've been maintaining it? I thought that was hilarious because it flew in. Funny. Um, but also it was creepy because Thrawn had his whole little screw. <laughs> Pause. Thrawn had his whole crew ready for action. His death troopers, night troopers, excuse me, chanting Thrawn. It got you into the mood that Thrawn is this really powerful and or scary guy. So he comes out, the blue skin, the red eyes, looking crazy, looking scary, but he had the press suit, you know what I'm saying? He had the regalia, he was ready to go. So it was an overall, it was a pretty interesting moment. But I found myself asking, because I did a little private research, Thrawn doesn't have any powers uh, into and of himself. So he's acting real tough for someone that potentially has a square off against Jedi, you know, um, anybody. Maybe it's a square off against a Sith, who knows? But Thrawn doesn't have any powers unto himself, so he's acting real tough. I like the confidence, but I was asking about that. So we're going to cut forward a little bit more in the episode. Ren versus the Bandits. So they gave her her howler, her steed, to go off into the wild and attempt to find Ezra. And she, you know, she's ready to go. So she comes up on these Bandits, and they get into a fight. Among other things, they're shooting like blaster bolts at her. They're shooting at her. And she's deflecting them with reaction time, like, you know, her armor hits the blaster bolts after they leave the muzzle. Crazy moment. You know, we, it's already ambiguous what, what Ren can even do. We don't know, we don't really know much about Ren at all, if you really pay attention to the episode. But she's reacting to blaster bolts, presumably flying at like the speed of light, their lasers, after they leave the muzzle? Bizarre. So watch that scene again. A little weird. Um, so she gets past she gets past the bandits with the aid of her lightsaber, and her howler that she's on finds these hermit crabs like in the sand on the ground. And she got lucky, she did. Because they look exactly like stones, literally. So she found them. The howler found them, and they can communicate. Um, because had they not, she would have been stuck out there. I mean, literally. It was just some barren wasteland. So shout out to the Howler. They found what she was looking for. So she gets into a little combo, a little back and forth with one of the little crab creatures. And it can talk, it can like actually communicate. And after a pretty short amount of time, it reveals the signet with the Republic, the New Republic logo on it. Ren puts two and two together pretty quickly and realizes that obviously, I mean, this is, this is the middle of nowhere in another galaxy, okay? So obviously they've met Ezra Miller at some point. She puts that together immediately. Thank God. So she's like, Ezra Miller. They know, the crabs say his name. They know him by name. They're like, we can lead him to you. Let's go. And they do. So she gets on the howler. The crabs take uh, her to their village, their little settlement. And, you know, she's, she's presumably going to find Ezra. But as they approach the settlement, I found myself thinking, you know, maybe she didn't get that lucky because they were parked up just by like a body of water. If you, any like basic tracking skills, hopefully you're never in the situation, but if you're, you know, lost, quote unquote, if you just follow a body of water, the coastline of, or a river, that's how you find a civilization. If you just follow some water, eventually you're gonna find some people. That's how it works. Jedi can do anything. We established that in episode five, the last episode. They're just OP on top of OP. They've got tracking skills as well. She would have known that. Just follow a body of water and you'll find somebody. 
Um, so shout out to the Howler, but she should have been able to figure that out eventually. And not only that, so when they get to the village, it's a bunch of the crabs. They got houses, they've got, they got fires going. I, I was like, the Howler couldn't have just smelled the village, smelled, they were cooking. Could have let her straight there. Whatever, just a funny moment. So before long, Ezra Miller himself emerges, looking jesus up. He had the little robes on, he had the beard. He was on his Jesus, on his Jesus swag. That was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. So, um, you know, they had their little reunion. They hug and stuff. And, um, you know, it was sweet. Especially if you've seen Rebels, that was likely a great moment. But Ezra asked the most pertinent question of all, and he really spoke for the audience. What a real person would say. How did you get here? How did you get here? I'm not down the street, Ren. I'm literally in another galaxy. How'd you get here? First question. Ren was doing somewhat okay during this episode. She was doing all right. But she reverted back to her crazy ways. She went back to her old tricks with her response. Let's let's not talk about that right now. What? What did she, what did she say? Let's not talk about that right now. You're in another galaxy. How did you get here? What? This little reunion's been good. What's going on right now? And uh, Ezra, unfortunately, he he acquiesces. He kind of agrees with her. He's like, yeah, we can, you know, we'll deal with that later. Bruh. I'm gonna need to know how you got to this other galaxy. And I'm gonna need to know now. We'll get to the food, we'll get to everything later. How are you here? So, kind of a funny moment, kind of a weird moment, but Ren has been host to the strangest moments in the show so far, so I'll give it to him. Now, so we, uh, we cut back to the witches and Thrawn and them. And Ahsoka's imminent arrivals announced. The witches are like, you know, there's an unseen thread. Something's approaching. Shout out to those witches because they're pretty powerful too. You know, I don't know if they're up with Jedi. I, I highly doubt that they're up with Jedi. But just to be able to know that, that's pretty tight. That's pretty tight. So they know Ahsoka's approaching. Thrawn, because he's smart, is a little worried. He's like, I got, he's like, he's looking, he's looking like Balin. He was like, man. This man, this ain't looking so good now. We, we got, you, you do have an issue. You have an issue. So, but he goes to the witch and he's like, I'm gonna need the aid of your dark magic once more. And they're like, yeah, you got it. Not only do you got it, destiny demands it, of course. And that brings the episode to a close. A really good episode. Um, another shout out. This is episode six and obviously more things are happening. A big shout out to the series. It's not just six episodes and done because the Marvel shows have been doing that for a while. The Star Wars shows following to a certain extent. So to have like a season with an unknown amount of episodes, I'm really, really happy about that. Like that's that's what we want. So it's keeping the intrigue going, keeping, you know, the excitement going. It's, I want to see more Ahsoka. This is a really good show. So shout out to that. Room for improvement. None, none. It was a more chill episode. It was a more subdued episode, um, which was the point. But as far as actual, any plot holes, cinematography issues, uh, blatant, you know, um, production issues, none. No room for improvement. You know if something happens, I'm gonna call it out. So no, there was no room for improvements, all good. And the rating, the rating. This episode gets a four out of five, or four out of five. Up to this point, no episode's gotten below a five. You know, episode one got a five and it's gone up from there. The last episode, episode five, got a 20 out of five. So it, this show is, it's stellar, it's outstanding. Is there anything wrong with this episode? No, not at all, not at all. It was just more chill. There was no like, you know, crazy action or, you know, anything that would take it to that five out of five level. And definitely, you know, in this case, not breaking the scale. But was there any issues? No, it was a solid four out of five, great cinematography. We got the the, uh, the introduction of Thrawn, which was kind of scary, but also kind of funny in its own way. Ran up to our old tricks, a solid four out of five. And guess what? That's it, that's it. Check out my last review, um, episode five of Ahsoka. One of the best things on Disney Plus, yes. Episode five of Ahsoka is not just one of the best episodes of Ahsoka, it's one of the best things you can find on Disney Plus. Watch that episode, watch that my review, watch my review, see what I gave it, check that out. And I recently did a reaction to Tekken 8, the Thong Way uh, trailer. So Tekken 8, January, you know, 2024, we're almost there through some bizarre circumstance this year is almost done i don't know what's happening but we're almost there and uh yeah check out that check out that reaction it looks great just like all the trailers the game looks great there we go and that's it that's it you know what i'm saying like i always say because i genuinely mean it when you're out here living this life out here living this uh this thing we call life stay up 
never want to be down in life, ever. Stay up. Got the river back here, some boats, the people boating, that's tight. Hiroshima match in Japan. You know we're on the YouTube game, so when I say I'm gonna see y'all soon, I mean it. I'm gonna always see y'all soon, be out here, okay? And until the next video, which will be, it's coming up. Let me y'all look out for it. Peace. Gotta walk for this one. Yeah.